Hi there and welcome to another math lesson. This time we're looking at the CERD laws. Now what is a CERD? Well a CERD is simply uh, the square root of a number when it doesn't have a rational answer. For example the square root of 2 is 1 comma 4 1 4 etc and there's no pattern or rationalization for what well it's, it's a rational um, uh, way of calculating it but there is it's not a rational number okay so that is called a third now when we talk about third laws what we're talking about is operations when we're working with roots with this is called the radical sign okay a radical sign when we're working with this radical sign or when we're working with fractional exponents. So let's quickly look at a few third laws. The first third law we've already seen, okay, we've looked at that. It's actually the definition. Third law one is that when I have a dth root of a base and an exponent, I can simplify it by dividing the exponent with the root degree, okay, the radical degree, I mean. Okay, so that is third law one. Third law two, okay, third law two follows from uh, the exponential laws. Third law two, it says that when I have the dth root of a base and an exponent and I multiply it with the dth root of another base. So let's call this base 1 and this one base 2 and this exponent 1 and this exponent 2. So they don't have to be the same at all. The only condition is that it's the same radical. When we are multiplying two same radicals with each other we may keep the radical and just multiply the insides. Okay. The interiors may be multiplied with each other, so something like this. Okay, now let me do an example of this, and you'll see it's actually very simple. I'm talking about something like if I take the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, that will give me an answer. Square root 2 times square root 8, since the, it's the same radical, both of them have a 2 there, I may multiply the interiors which means this is the square root of 16 and the square root of 16 we know is 4 now both of these were thirds to begin with okay they were uh, non-rational numbers but when we multiply them we actually do get a rational integer okay let's do another example let's take the cube root the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 25. Again, these are two uh, thirds. They don't have rational answers. But when we multiply them together, we get, since both of them, we have the same radical, we may multiply the insides together okay, to get the cube root of 125, and that is simply 5. Okay, cube root of 125. Now, why is this law true? Why is it true that I can do this? Well, let me let me quickly do a proof okay a quick proof if I have the dth root of a base and an exponent 1 and I multiply it with the dth root of another base base 2 with a different or the same doesn't matter exponent okay remember what the first law says is that that root can simply divide the exponents so this is b e1 divided by d times b e2 divided by d. Okay. And now in this case what we see is that both of the exponents were divided by d or to divide with d is the same as multiplying with 1 over d. Okay, so I could have rather said it like this. This is e1 times 1 over d times b2. 
and e2 times 1 over d. Okay, so we see both exponents were divided by d. Now that would have been the same as taking base 1 with its exponent times, because there's a multiply, base 2 with its exponent, and in a bracket, uh, uh, raise both of those to the exponent of 1 over d, which means um, the law that we did, we looked at it going from here to there. In other words, distributing the exponent to the exponents inside. Okay, now we're just going this way is almost uh, taking out an, a common exponent, a common factor from the exponents. That's kind of what we did there. And then in our next step, we know, oh, but 1 over d means we take this bracket, which is b1, e1, times b2, e2, okay? And 1 over d means that it's the dth root. Okay? And since that's just an exponent of 1, it just means it's, we don't need to write it, so I'm just going to, to erase this completely. And that's my proof. Okay, here's my proof. What I had up here that if I have two same roots being multiplied, I can multiply the inside of those roots. Okay, so in our next topic, we're going to look at simplifying thirds. Okay, so simplifying thirds, but I tell you what, I'll stop this video here and then we'll do that in the next video. See you then.